This is the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedic Video Series. I'm Satal Ashraid, I'm a Pediatric Orthopedic Surgeon. In this video, I'll take you through how I do botulinum injection. Uh, other name is botan or botox injection. And this is part of chapter 18 of the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedic book. Uh, botox act at the neuromuscular junction, which is a junction between the nerve ends and the muscles. It acts by inhibiting the release of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter stored in a small vesicles at the end of the nerve ending. Uh, Botox get entered into these vesicles and prevent the release of the acetylcholine, and this is how it works. There are seven types of Botox. They named from A to G, and they all work in the same mechanism. However, the exact detail how they work, they slightly vary, and this is what's shown in this picture. The uh, indication for Botox injection is spasticity in children with cerebral palsy or stroke, cosmesis to improve skin wrinkles, migraine, and excessive sweating. To understand spasticity, spasticity is defined as speed-dependent hypertonia. In its simplest form, hypertonia can be measured by the difference between R1 and R2. R1 is the first catch or the first stop for the limit during movement in the range of motion while R2 when it eventually stops and doesn't move anymore. The difference between R1 and R2 is the measure of the spasticity in the limb. Uh, the bigger the difference between R1 and R2, the more spasticity is there. Traditionally, uh, Botox is indicated if the difference is more than 20 degrees. A low difference or a difference of zero indicate a contracture, and Botox injection usually does not work on contractures. And although Botox work on spasticity, spasticity on its own is not an indication for Botox, but problems caused by spasticity is an indication for Botox. In the example we've seen earlier, although there was spasticity in the hamstring muscles, this is on its own is not an indication for Botox, but if this is spasticity reduced the step length for the child and reducing his gait efficiency, this is an indication for uh, Botox injection. Uh, now, for the purpose of this video, we have uh, four methods how to inject Botox. The clinical methods, which was the old historical method, the ultrasound guided method, uh, in which we use ultrasound to guide needle into the correct muscles, the neurostimulator technique, and a combined of all these things. Uh, there are several commercial available botulinum uh, toxin injection, and by far the commonest is Botox Ilergan, which comes in a vial of 100 units. The usual dose is 10 units per kg or 400 units, whichever is lower. Uh, I usually recommend uh, 1 to 2 units per kg per large muscles such as gastrocnemius or hamstring and 0.5 units per kg per small muscles such as the upper limb muscles. Whichever dose you use, please please check uh, the package leaflet for any changes. Uh, this is the vial for Elargan, which comes in 100 units. I usually check the expiry date to make sure that it's not expired. And I usually use a uh, normal saline point nine person to reconstitute it. Uh, in this example, I wanted to have 300 units as a total. So I fill a syringe with three mil and I put one mil in each vial. And this will give me 100 units per one mil. And I usually use an insulin syringe uh, to aspirate the Botox and this will give me 10 units per 0.1 ml which make calculation very easy. Uh, in the clinical or the manual method for Botox injection, we sterilize the skin using chlorohexidine stick or chlorohexidine spray. We identify the muscles we want to inject by moving the limbs so that it will move the muscles. Once we identify, we insert the needle in and we move the muscle again, and if the needle moving, this means the needle in the muscles. Then we control the needle very well before we inject the Botox, as we calculated earlier. The main limitation of this method is that the needle could pass the muscles that we want to check, and it's still moving. So it's less accurate than other methods. Uh, to overcome this inaccuracy, ultrasound has been introduced uh, to reduce the error. Here I'm trying to inject the flexor carpi ulnaris. I use the ultrasound probe to identify uh, the moving muscles by moving the wrist into ulna and radial deviation. Once I identify the muscle, I will try to introduce the needle and the, the ultrasound guidance 
uh, into the muscles that has identified. And here we can see the tip of the needle uh, coming into the muscles uh, that we need to inject and uh, the ultrasound guidance. This is relatively more accurate and it's often combined with the clinical method because once the needle inside the muscles that uh, I want to inject, I do uh, double check this again uh, using the clinical method by moving the wrist into ulna and radial deviation. And as you can see here, the needle is moving. So these are two methods to ensure that the tip of the needle in the right place. Uh, the problem with ultrasound guidance method uh, is the difficulty in identifying small muscles when they are compacted together, as in the forearm. That's why the neurostimulator method uh, has an uh, extra advantage. Uh, in this method, we have to have a neuromuscular stimulator. There are many commercially available, like this one from LifeTech. It has two electrodes, uh, one is red, we usually attach it to ECG sticker. Uh, then attach it to uh, skin anywhere on the child and the other electrode is attached to a special needle. Uh, this needle uh, it used for two purposes uh, number one to stimulate the muscle and number two to inject the Botox. Uh, the device itself it will be switched on or off from this little square there then we can change how many uh, milliampere we want to use. It's usually range from zero to five milliampere. And I usually set it for 3.4. You can pause it here. It came in two frequencies, one hertz and two hertz. And you can switch between these from that little square. And this is how you want the pulse to be delivered with its continuous pulses or interrupted pulses. Again, uh, identifying the muscles after sterilizing the skin, uh, use the needle provided by the device, put it in the muscles, check it manually to make sure it is inside the muscle, then check it electrically. As you can see, the gastric muscle is contracting and pushing the, fo uh, the food downward. So we are in the right muscles. We stop the device, we hold the needle very tight so that we don't advance it by mistake more deeper, and we inject the Botox. And this leaves us with the final combined method in which we combine all these methods to uh, achieve accuracy. And the common place is really the forearm muscle. Here I'm trying to inject the flexor digitorum profundus in a child with long flexor tightness. I identify this muscle uh, both clinically and by ultrasound and advance my needle that I use it for a neurostimulator into the muscles uh, then I check it uh, electrically. As you can see in this example, once I'm happy, I'm stimulating only the flexor digital and profundus, uh, I'll inject the Botox. Again, with all other methods, always before you connect your syringe to the needle, uh, hold the needle tight so that you don't advance it uh, by mistake. Aspirate before you inject, ensure there's no blood uh, is coming and you're not injecting into the vein or a vessels, and inject the uh, calculated amount into the muscles. And this will take us to the end of our video in which we looked at the four methods to inject Botox. I hope you find this is useful for your exam and for your clinical practice.